For more than 100 years now, Puerto Rico has been a colony of the United States, a so-called free associated state acquired from Spain after the Spanish-American War in 1898. Since 1917, Puerto Ricans have been citizens of the U.S. with some rights and privileges, but folks on the island can't vote for president and have no voting members in Congress. About half a million Puerto Ricans live in New Jersey, about a million in New York, many with family ties to the island. For decades now, the status of Puerto Rico has been a topic of discussion and several plebiscites, referendums, looking to gain a sense of the people's wishes. They have been inconclusive, so last month, Senator Bob Menendez and others proposed the Puerto Rico Self-Determination Act, in theory, to finally settle the status question. Joining us to discuss that is former Daily News columnist, Rutgers professor and co-host of Democracy Now! on a thousand radio stations across the country from Ponce de Puerto Rico by way of East Harlem in Brooklyn, Juan Gonzalez. Senor, welcome back. Well, thank you, Dave. It's great to be here. So to hear Senator Menendez and his co-sponsors tell it, the Puerto Rico Self-Determination Act is going to settle this question. How is this bill going to do that? Well, I think it's definitely a positive step, and it's actually the second attempt because there was an earlier bill introduced uh, by uh, uh, Darren Soto, the representative from uh, Orlando, Florida, and also supported by Richie Torres, the uh, another Puerto Rican who is a uh, from the South Bronx who replaced Jose Serrano. They have their own uh, status act, and this is actually a response to that act. Uh, so we now have two competing. Uh, proposals uh, uh, in the Congress, and uh, it remains to be seen how that this will play out. Uh, I think the key thing is that everyone realizes after the crises that Puerto Rico has been through and the imposition of the Financial Control Board by Congress, that something needs to be done uh, to settle the permanent status of Puerto Rico. But Congress seems unable to agree. Uh, sometimes it seems that Puerto Rican people are unable to agree. So I think that uh, remains to be seen. I think the key thing about this proposal by Senator Menendez, backed by Alexandra Casio cortez and Nidia Velasquez, two other Puerto Rican members of, of, of Congress, is that it declares that the, there will be a commission established that will come up with a solution that is they, what they say is outside the territorial clause of the Constitution, which means that it's not it, that uh, the United States has to recognize that it will negotiate with the people of Puerto Rico over the future status. Up until now, it's always been Congress that decides. Congress decides one way or another what the status will be. So this is an attempt to create a negotiation between a constituent assembly that would be created in Puerto Rico and the commission that Congress would establish. So that at least recognizes that all the previous forms of autonomy for Puerto Rico have not worked. The most recent plebiscite uh, was in 2020. It asked simply, should Puerto Rico be admitted immediately into the union as a state, yes or no? It passed 52 to 47. That didn't settle the question, though, right? Why? Well, no, it didn't settle the question because there, were, there was quite a bit of abstention uh, in that vote. So there were a, a, a huge percentage of the Puerto Rican people who did not participate when normally elections in Puerto Rico get 80% uh, or more turnout. Uh, and uh, so it, it's not a settled question, uh, even though there was a slim majority of those who voted who did vote for statehood. Uh, clearly, when most territories are admitted into the state of the Union, whether it was Hawaii or Alaska or Arizona or New Mexico, uh, by the time they were admitted, there were overwhelming majorities of the people were demanding statehood. That's never been the case with Puerto Rico. Uh, it's only been in recent years that this statehood movement has even reached near 50 percent. We know what a yes vote would mean in a question like that, but what does a no vote mean? Well, uh, 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 now, are you talking about a, a no vote for statehood or a, a, yeah. or a, a no yeah, vote? The on question the... was, should, we, should Puerto Rico be a state, yes or no? And if you vote yes, obviously, that's one way. But if you vote no, what does that mean? Continuation of the status quo? Well, it either means continuation of the status quo, which I think everyone recognizes is no longer acceptable, uh, uh, or it means some form of 
greater independence, whether that means free association, which the United Nations recognizes as a, a step just before in the total independence, but where the, the former colonial territory is recognized as a sovereign state entering into a union with its former colonizer. Uh, and uh, so that there's, if the people vote no, then it's either got to be complete independence or some form of free association which obviously uh, clearly is what the old Munoz Marin pop, uh, Commonwealth was meant to be, some form of greater autonomy, but still within some kind of relationship with the United States. Your home is mostly here on the mainland, but do, do you have a preference? What is, you were born there, what would you like to see the status of Puerto Rico be? Well, I, I, I believe, you know, I, I've always been a, uh, previously, uh, as a youngster and in growing up, a, a supporter of independence in, for Puerto Rico. But I also understand that the Puerto Rican people are, have expressed their will to one way or another maintain a relationship with the United States. American citizenship is a citizenship that is people around the world seek to get. But at the same time, Puerto Rico is a different country. <laughs> it's got a different history, a different territory, a different language, and a different culture. So how do you reconcile the fact that Puerto Rico wants to maintain a relationship with the United States of one kind or another, but at the same time wants to be recognized as a separate and distinct uh, country? That's the quagmire. And that's what I believe the United Nations has always had a, a model for how to deal with these kinds of situations, which is called free association, where uh, a territory uh, is recognized as being a sovereign state by its uh, dominant state uh, with its own right to representation in the United Nations, its own right to conduct its own economic treaties, but enters into a relationship with the, uh, the, uh, the dominant country where they share the same uh, money, they, uh, the, the same uh, financial system, they might have common military defense, but they are recognized as an independent state. And I think that that is in the direction that inevitably Puerto Rico is heading all right, Juan Gonzalez, we will revisit this story as the year goes on. Good to see you again, Professor. Thanks for coming on with us. Thank you.